wanted to do a review of the Emporia View app. So this is a, a nice little energy monitor. Um, they're only a hundred bucks for both the main clamps and uh, eight additional CTs for monitoring other circuits. So uh, uh, that, that is way cheaper than anything else that's out there on the market right now. So we've been using Sense for a while, uh, which is $300 and has its strengths and weaknesses. Uh, the biggest weakness of Sense being that it doesn't do a great job of picking up a bunch of loads, particularly variable loads. Um, so, uh, um, uh, it's a, I, I didn't feel like I was totally done and, uh, Seth Terry of Emporia was kind enough to send me one of these last year. So I put it in the end of November and, uh, I've been monitoring ever since. So I'll walk you through the app. When I first got this, the app was not very good. It was borderline useless. Um, and then a couple of months ago, there was an update and it has really helped it out. So we're looking at the home screen here. Take a look at the top. Uh, so see where it says energy use in kilowatt hours. So uh, this will drive some people a little bit batty, but I, I see why they did it and I kind of like it. Um, so I'll go from energy use in kilowatt hours to a click minute and see it goes to energy use in KW. Um, and so you can see what's going on. That is the average for the minute. And then you can go to what's going on right now. And you can see uh, all the, the circuits exactly. And that changes every second. Um, so there's a, there's a chart that you can look at as well. But I find myself looking at this one quite a bit. Because it, it uh, breaks out the individual loads. And my car just finished charging, so just walk through these. So this is my house. Um, so main is the whole thing. Uh, living room heat pump is the top one there, number seven. So that is the air conditioner. And then uh, uh, that circuit also has like my TV and stereo and a couple of other things on it. Uh, then three and four there are the laundry. So the laundry's running right now. And it's the, the dryer, I think, and the washer are both running. So it's using 2,000 watts, fair amount. Um, but overall, the usage isn't that bad. And my office is uh, number eight there. My laptop is plugged in right now. I'll unplug the laptop, see if it moves very much. Yeah, look, so the laptop was basically pulling everything. So I'll plug it back in. And it should pop back up yeah there we are so um it's wild that it's pulling as much as 115 watts but there you go um so this gives you a pretty good view into what's going on at the moment and then the minute will average it out over that i don't hardly ever use the minute i look at second or then i move to uh so the hour so one bad part about this, you can't select the time period. So it is what it is. This is the last 60 minutes period. Um, you can't select that. Uh, it was something that I asked for. Um, I think it's in the development, but uh, it's not out yet. Uh, but you can see what happened. So in the last hour, look at the top. There's my car. It finished charging. So it used a little over three kilowatt hours in the last hour. That car takes about 11 and a half kilowatt hours to charge, and then you get 9.7 usable out of it. It's a Chevy Volt. Uh, and then you can see the, uh, the other stuff there too. And I like how it has the balance at the bottom. So uh, those top couple there, the EV and the living room heat pump in my office, that is 96% of usage. So there's only a little tiny bit there, 4% that was not from those. And so it, uh, it will take what it knows from those eight and then subtract it out uh, from the mains and get you there. Now, one really important point, though, this monitor does not monitor voltage. So it doesn't know if you're running 110 volts or 120 volts, which can throw your results off by 5%, uh, up to 5%. So that makes it not a hard recommend for me yet. But uh, according to Seth, that capability is supposed to be coming in the fall. And once that happens, uh, this is going to be a, a pretty nice little device. Um, okay, so let's look at the last day. 
So my house has used about 34 kilowatt hours over the last 24 hours. And a big chunk of it, the biggest chunk being the, the heat pump. So this house does not yet have a proper HVAC system. Uh, we bought this little 1400 square foot house right on the Cuyahoga River. And it has a wood stove in the center, which was meant to be the main heat plant. And then all the rooms have baseboard electric. So I also bought a little roll around heat pump. It's about a one ton capacity. And that is enough to cool the house uh, and it will heat the house um, uh, down to about freezing. And below that, you have to use some resistance or something else to uh, get it done or switch over to the wood stove. Um, uh, but anyway, that's uh, so you see the 11 kilowatt hours from that. There is the barn. Uh, so that's my car. So that used, look at that, a little under 12 kilowatt hours. Um, and so that is a full charge that it just got. Uh, you can see the laundry has used a little bit. We've run a fair number of loads here, probably run four or five full loads in the last 24 hours. So that makes sense. My office has used a little bit. Uh, the water heater has not run in the last 24 hours, which is interesting to see. And anyway, so that's that. So then you can zoom out to the week and see what's going on here as well. So uh, biggest user for the week has been my car. So 60 kilowatt hours out of 143 has been charging my car. This is nice. What the house uses versus what an electric car uses can be tricky to break out. So you really need an energy monitor to do that. And this is the least expensive option on the market that I know of right now to do that. Uh, but again, with the, not having the voltage monitoring, it's probably not going to be dead on. Uh, so, I mean, this is showing out to a thousandth of a kilowatt hour. It's not that accurate. Um, but it'll give you a good idea, if nothing else. So if you're trying to figure out where a big load is, uh, this should be helpful. So there's the, the week. There's the month. And I believe it's a rolling 30 days. I think all this is a rolling um, and, uh, so you can see some various stuff there. Um, but the, the year is probably the most interesting one. So this goes back to January 1st of 2020. I'm recording this on June 19th of 2020. So, uh, we've used a fair amount of juice at 10,000 kilowatt hours. Um, and you can see, so the, the heat pump has used the most, um, of any single category that is clamped anyway, um, that has a CT clamp, a current transmitter clamp on it. Uh, my car has used about 1400 kilowatt hours. Uh, the water heater has used a little under 700 total between those two. That is right about on track for the 13 or 1400 that it says it should use. And I find it kind of remarkable. My wife has, uh, been struggling with some back issues and she's taking more baths to try and release the muscles uh, in her back. So uh, she's pretty routinely taking two baths a day, which uses a lot of water. And that's still all the more the usage is. So I'm quite happy. That is a Sandin carbon dioxide uh, heat pump water heater. So it has an outdoor unit that hangs actually just outside my office and then has a big 80 gallon tank in our laundry room. Um, then you can see my office and then the laundry has used 300 kilowatt hours so far this year. So it's like 35 or $40 for the year is what that has cost. Um, you can change this by the way. So if you want to change to a different thing, like you can go to carbon if you want, um, a gallon of gas, but, uh, usually what most of us are going to be looking for is dollars. So that 10,000 uh, or so kilowatt hours, it's about 13 cents a kilowatt hour here on average. So I have that entered in through the settings. And uh, so this gives you an idea of what various stuff has cost. So about half of the fuel in my car, a little over uh, half this year, really, um, thanks to uh, COVID-19. We've been doing fewer trips and shorter trips. Um, so what is that? It's a little under 200 bucks for the juice. Um, to do six months of driving. That's a little over half of my driving, so not too bad. Um, I'll go back to watts because that is my preferred metric because I, I think in watts now. Um, 
But uh, anyway, you can see the various things in here. Now, in this case, see the bottom there, 5169. That is because we used a lot of resistance heat to keep the house warm in January and February. So even though we have the insulation levels halfway decent on this house, I'm not done with it yet. It's not fully air sealed. It's not fully insulated, but it's decent. Um, that's quite a bit of resistance. And that's not all resistance. You know, that's going to have the other lights. That's going to have the stove, um, other things like that in there. So that is everything aside from the ones that are clamped. So that is how that screen works. Then there is the graphing screen, uh, which is the one that I also use sometimes. Uh, so I mainly use this home screen. I like this one by far the best, uh, but the, the graph can be useful too. So you can see it defaults to uh, year. So there's the 10,000 or so that it has used so far this year. Oop, and that is pretty finicky. And 3200 was pretty impressive because that was a month. It was like a five weeks last year because I put this in right about uh, Thanksgiving last year. But we can switch. So we can look at the month. And then you can click back to see what the various months are. So you can see I was pushing 3,000 kilowatt hours a month. That is a ton. Um, I expect that to be cut about in half uh, when we get a proper HVAC system in with um, a good heat pump in that's actually sized right. Not a, a roll around one with mediocre efficiency and uh, one that falls flat on its face as it gets cold out. Better heat pumps do a better job putting out full heat capacity or near full heat capacity to lower temperatures. Um, if you have like a, a standard heat pump at 17 degrees out, it, which is a standard, it might only be putting out half of its full capacity where a good heat pump uh, of a more standard variety will probably be in the 80 to 90% range. And mini split heat pumps um, uh, can be at 100%. Oftentimes they'll, they'll hold 100% down to zero. Fahrenheit. Anyway, I digress. So there's the, the month. We can look at the week. And this is pretty nice. So you can see what you're doing week by week. And say you look at this week and you're like, all right, how much of that was water heater? So this is only half of the water heater. And this is one thing that I regret and I'll probably shift. Um, so if you have uh, dual pole breakers, the odds are they pull almost equally. So it may not be dead on, but it'll be a pretty good idea. I could just take this 4.42 and multiply it times two and it'll be close enough. In fact, let's take a look. 4.42 uh, versus 4.44. That's close enough for my use. Um, somebody else may wanna be more precise. I'm mainly looking for a pretty good idea of what's going on. And that is that for that so let's go back to the entire house oh. main there we go so you can flip back through that you can go through the days this can be nice to look at to get an idea i like the hourly quite a bit because this helps you understand what's going on so see this big spike here that's off on the right, that is charging my car. Um, and that, that spike looks pretty consistent. It takes three hours and 15 minutes to charge the car. So um, depending on when you turn it on, it's gonna span across four or five hours. Um, so the one on the right, you can see it charged within four different hours. And then uh, the one uh, to the left, it charged within five different hours. So it, it uh, spilled over a little bit. But that it, spike is, what charging the car looks like and you can see that it uh, just finished another cycle as well and yesterday we didn't have the air conditioner on so you see where that's all fairly low hour by hour and in hour here it's looking at the average watts that it's using but anyway, it helps give you an idea of what's going on. You can look at minutes. This is where being able to select the time would be really, really nice. And that is not part of this yet. Because say you want to look at what was it minute by minute a year ago. You can't do that. Like if you switched back to week mode and you 
you look back, or let's say look at December, and then you go to minute, look, it still goes to right now. So uh, we're back in June. So that doesn't work well. So you can only look back a little bit. And then you can look by the second here as well. And the up and down that you're seeing right now, uh, that is either the washer or the dryer cycling is what you're seeing. So in fact, here, what is it that's... So the laundry is pulling most of it than the uh, air conditioner. Um, so that gives you a pretty good idea. The, the other two screens I don't hardly use, so they're savings. I have no idea what this means. I don't know where it comes from. Um, what is potential savings and missed savings? I, I have no idea. Um, I'm sure there's some kind of metric behind it, but I don't know how that's calculated. And then this last thing is nice. You can look at the different devices. You can look at the account. I like how you can export data. So, uh, although I've, I've come to find, I don't actually like data. I like data visualization so that I can see what's going on and tr uh, try and figure out what's going on. That is my preferred thing. There's a bunch of information that you can put in for your house. Um, so like heat source, I put in electric space heater because that's basically what the backup is that does a good chunk of the work. Uh, but there's all sorts of stuff that you can put in here and it should have my volts. Yeah, it just has one EV. And so that is the Emporia View. Um, like I said, it's not a hard recommend yet, um, but for a hundred bucks, it's a heck of a deal. I wish it had the voltage monitoring. One other really key piece though that's nice is it's super easy to install because rather than having two crappy little tiny wires that you're probably going to reverse so that uh, a circuit says that it's making energy instead of using energy and then you have to go figure out how to reverse that uh, i love what emporia did they use headphone jacks and so you just plug uh, you have to put the two clamps on uh, or sorry you just put the clamp on and then the wire comes down that has the two wires it goes into the headphone jack and you plug the headphone jack into the monitoring device and you're done so it was a very fast install. It was not frustrating. Um, I really like that part of it. So basically, once it gets voltage monitoring, um, it is it is a hard recommend. And uh, then particularly once they make it so that you can select your time period, then this will probably work. So I intend to start using this in projects because uh, at 100 bucks and you know a half an hour install time, I don't mind throwing that in where uh, a $300 sense I want to charge extra for because uh, that's enough of a hit. Um, but uh, anyway, this is something to consider. So if you're trying to figure out where there's an energy user in your home or you want to separate out your car from the house if you have a Tesla or another EV, um, this is a pretty nice little product. So uh, take a look at it for $100. Um, what do you have to lose? I'm Nate the House Whisperer. Have a great day, and don't forget to click subscribe, click that bell, all that stuff that we always tell you about. Have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.